Good morning. Welcome to the second episode of Turner Updates, a short bi-weekly digest of essential news and events pertaining to Wisconsin and Milwaukee. News you need to know and where you need to go. I'm Emilio Dottore. And I'm Gabby Hart. Today is May 29th, 2023. In state news, there are calls for Adegami County Board Supervisor Tim Hermes to resign. Speakers in the press and at the demonstration outside Adegami County Courthouse highlight the misguided, wrong, and transphobic fairy tales that Hermes spouted about there being some plot for men to pretend they are trans in order to follow little girls into bathrooms. With zero facts to back his claim, it seems Hermes has next to zero support for his nonsense. Hermes tried to hide behind the free speech protection while implying that those opposed to his free speech aren't allowed to say anything. We'll be following developments as they occur. If you missed our last broadcast where we discussed the proposed shared revenue bill in front of our legislature, well, it's still garbage in Milwaukee, Racine, Kenosha, but especially Milwaukee, are being ripped off. In these bills, the cities and counties of Milwaukee will be able to raise sales taxes to offset pension debt, but only under ridiculously stringent and harmful conditions. Too numerous to mention here again. Here's hoping we get a more fair share of revenue and the financial resources, which we generate in the first place. Return to Milwaukee so we can fund roads, schools, courts, and pretty much everything. Please follow Senate Bill 301 and Assembly Bill 245 to find out more. Remember, 90% of the collected people of Wisconsin do better under the governor's budget than they do under these shared revenue bills. Watch to see if they hold to this horrible bill and if your elected officials cave in an effort to just get whatever scraps are offered. Also, keep watching developments regarding the state budget. It needs to be passed in June. No word on this yet. Only a lot of rumors, but the education portion of the budget is taken up last, and they're talking universal school vouchers with no income eligibility needed. So I think that means free private and religious schools education for wealthy folks. I'm not sure how that will play out, but hey, they're your tax dollars. This past Thursday, AB 232 finally got its first public hearing. This bill calls for the inclusion of Asian American and Hmong American studies in Wisconsin's K-12 education. Several dozen people from across the state showed up to testify for this long-needed improvement to our state's education system. This bill enjoys bipartisan support, and the Milwaukee Turner showed up in force to support the bill and testify. Locally, the Milwaukee Municipal Court suddenly canceled the contract for Justice Point's Municipal Court Alternatives Program, also known as MCAP, which is a program that has done incredible work for the city of Milwaukee for the last 40 years. NCAP has understood that complex, unmet needs require resources, not punishment, since defendants may be unable to comply with penalties and then gain further court sanctions as a result. Vulnerable communities such as those experiencing mental health crises and individuals with intellectual disabilities struggle to navigate the court system on their own, and they benefit from the expertise of the social workers and case managers to connect them to resources. Milwaukee Municipal Court has a statutory and constitutional obligation to provide alternatives to payment to these defendants, and Justice Point helps the Municipal Court comply with that law. MCAP has served nearly 62,000 people over the last 20 years alone. People of color, and especially black people, experience disproportionate police contact and are therefore subjected to legal punishment systems and court debt at a higher rate. As a result, 80% of the individuals served by MCAP have been black, unhoused people, who are exposed to police contact at a greater frequency and often have a higher level of needs. Over the last two decades, MCAP has facilitated nearly 150,000 hours of volunteer work at nonprofit organizations. These services are essential. If the mayor and county don't act soon, these services will come to an abrupt halt on July 11th. The National Lawyers Guild of Milwaukee has organized a coalition to save Justice Point Municipal Court Alternatives Program too. Last week, our friends at Metcalf Park Community Bridges went before the city of Milwaukee's zoning, neighborhood, and development and had their resolution to purchase abandoned city lots unanimously approved. This will allow them to build a thriving and robust Metcalf Park, empowering their community with land ownership. Congrats to Melody McCurtis and all of the great folks there. And in baseball news, American Family Field, the Brewer Stadium, which is primarily owned by the state-created Southeast Wisconsin Professional Baseball Park District, needs to find a plan to provide an estimated $448 million in repairs and upgrades, according to Major League Baseball Commissioner Robert Manfred. The district is responsible for most of the renovations under terms of this lease. And Governor Evers and the state legislature are wrangling over plans as we speak. Stephanie Rapkin, known to protesters as Spittin' Stephanie, has been sentenced to 60 days in jail. 
This is two years in the making and comes after a lengthy process due to delays and rejection by the accused of a one-year probation and 100 days community service plea deal from Stephanie, who preferred to take her chances at trial. The judge in this case stated that Rapkin lied on the stand and offered testimony that was in complete contradiction to the testimony she provided to law enforcement. Judge Cravello stated that Rapkin should and will be held accountable for that. Spitting on someone is one of the most vile things you can do and is the highest form of disrespect. Protesters were out demonstrating their constitutional rights and by no means does anyone have the right nor should have the audacity to express their feelings for human beings by spitting in their face. But Rapkin is also facing a felony battery charge against a Shorewood police officer who she need while being arrested during this incident. Hope it was worth the 60 days to you, Steph. Peace Week wrapped up last week with Heal the Hood on Milwaukee's north side. Headed by Ajamu Butler and team and funded by the Office of Violence Prevention, the Heal the Hood celebration ended the week-long peacekeeping efforts initiated by Milwaukee Mayor Cavalier Johnson. There were peace walks, panels, summits, events, and more. Mayor Johnson encouraged Milwaukee residents to be the change that's needed in our communities by uniting with each other to take a stand against crime. Crime reporting, reporting it, and saying the word reporting as often as possible in one sentence. There were peace walks, panels, summits, events, and more. Mayor Johnson encouraged Milwaukee residents to be the change that's needed in our communities by uniting with each other to stand against crime, by reporting crime, speaking with families, neighbors, and friends about their behaviors and outlook, etc. Let's have a truly safe summer, Milwaukee. Friends, you are all encouraged and invited to join us on June 7th and 8th for our in-person Zero Youth Corrections Forums as we look to gather community input and strategies to guide the process for the next round of funding geared towards, as the name suggests, reducing youth incarceration and the impact of the criminal legal system on young people in Milwaukee. We hope to award another $400,000 again this year, thanks to the support of Milwaukee County and the Public Welfare Foundation. This next round of sessions will take place at the Wisconsin Black Historical Society, located at 2620 West Center Street on June 7th at 5.30 to 7.30 p.m., and America's Black Holocaust Museum on June 8th, same time, 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. We look to push this next round of funding out near September of this year, and links to register for each session will be posted below in the comments. And now with us for the Confronting Mass Incarceration Minute is Gabby Hart. Thank you, Emilio. After four jail deaths in less than a year, years of calling for accountability, justice, and proper care for those incarcerated, also family-led protests have led county supervisors to be able to finally get clearance for a detailed audit of Milwaukee County Jail practices and policies. Breon Green, Salivi Therion, Octaviano Juarez Coro, and Terrence Mack all died in custody over the last 11 months alone. While each death was caused by different means, one thing is for certain. Milwaukee County jail system has fallen short of its duties to ensure people are safe and unharmed while waiting for trial, innocent until proven guilty. Some of the deaths have resulted in charges against jail staff, according to Milwaukee Journal. And three guards were fired or resigned following investigations in two deaths. While the DA found no basis for criminal liability in Breon Green's death, who allegedly strangled himself with a phone cord as a jail officer walked by, I say we have a ways to go as far as accountability and justice, but supervisors have been steadfast and have started the process of getting some transparency that will hopefully lead to convictions and prevention of any deaths while awaiting trial and trying to make it through an already low point in your life. Given that staff shortages can and do lead to lack of quality of care or service in any field, this particular arena is not one to be taken lightly, as you can see. The audit is set to examine the following, the sheriff's office budget, intake processes, mental and physical health assessments and treatment, medication distribution, suicide prevention, monitoring of high-risk individuals, staff training, and the organizational structure of the staff responsible for oper operating and monitoring the jail. A research plan by the county supervisor plans to dive into discretionary decisions, decision-making, and operations, including timing related to video or body cam footage, internal and external investigations, and disciplinary proceedings and investigations. I will end this in the words of the brilliant and compassionate supervisor, Felicia Martin. Anytime anyone is within our care, we want to give them the utmost respect and make certain that they are taken care of as it speaks to their whole health, including mental health, and we want to make sure that they have adequate access to that. 
All right, friends, it's time for upcoming events. Uh, May 24th kicked off Fathers Making Progress as Fathers Building Fathers class at the Washington Park Urban Ecology Center. This is a great ongoing program for all fathers and father figures, and the program offers the opportunity to learn, mentor, just chat about fatherly duties with like-minded people. There will be uh, about 12 weeks for folks to uh, get involved prior to their graduation ceremony. The link for that is below. May 27th is the final registration date for Connect, Collaborate, Communicate, a health and environmental justice training series. It's free and open to anyone over 18. You know, our changing climate is affecting our health and the health of those around us. And if you're curious to learn more about how our environment affects health, what's going on in Milwaukee's green spaces, environmental justice issues, and how you can advocate for positive change, join 16th Street Community Health Center's Department of Environmental Health and Community Wellness this summer. Their free training program takes place at different green spaces throughout Milwaukee. It's all on uh, four different Saturday mornings over the summer and focuses on environmental and human health, environmental justice, non-traditional parks and green spaces, and civic advocacy. The program uh, will introduce you to brilliant and passionate experts from all over the city, and you'll get to take a deep dive into these topics in an experiential learning format. Links to that are below. Also, May 30th, Southeastern Oneida Tribal Services is offering their senior scams and internet fraud drop-in session, 10 to 11 a.m. May 31st, 5 to 7 p.m., Milwaukee Area Technical College is going out to the community. If you want to learn more about their scholarship programs, you can visit them at the link that will be posted below. Wednesday, May 31st, the Gerald Ignace Indian Health Center is hosting their Murdered Missing uh, Indigenous Women and Relatives Community event honoring Nada Frank, a Native father's experience with his missing and murdered Indigenous daughter. Uh, June 1st, annual meeting for the Jewish Community Relations Council will take place from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. at the Ivy House, 906 South Barclay Street. The keynote speaker is County Executive David Crowley. And it's also festival season. Uh, one of the first festivals to kick us off is Milwaukee's Pride Fest, lasting from June 1st to June 3rd. Also on June 3rd, from 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m., you can join neighbors and neighborhood partners at Amani United's monthly committee meeting. Uh, occurring the first Saturday each month, this meeting will be held at 8.30 a.m. in person at the Dominican Center, which is 2470 West Locust Street. June 3rd and 4th is Milwaukee's favorite Crusher Fest. Links to all of these can be found below. And uh, June 3rd is the Milwaukee Highland Games. On, and on June 4th, we have our walking tour, Untold Stories, Women of the 1800s from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. The contributions of women in shaping the early history of Milwaukee are frequently untold in history books. Not any longer, thanks to Milwaukee guide and author Anita Petriakowski. Learn about the women who founded the Soldiers' Home, Children's Hospital, and Milwaukee Civil War Monument, The Victorious Charge. Also on June 6th, Wisconsin Department of Veteran Affairs and Milwaukee Urban Stables hosts our next Milwaukee County Veteran Meet and Greet from 5 to 7.30. June 6th to the 9th is Polish Fest. Mm, Polish Fest has great food. Uh, Milwaukee Turners celebrate National Get Outdoors Day, June 10th from 1 to 4 p.m. over here at the Turner Hall parking lot and gymnasium. You can enjoy yoga, rock climbing, rappelling off the walls of our building, t-ball, gymnastics, and bicycling with the Turners and Bubbler. There'll be a lot of fun. Uh, June 10th is the Milwaukee Lantern Festival, which is a floating lantern event that includes food, games, activities, vendors, music, and the beauty of thousands of lanterns adorned with letters of love, hope, and dreams that you write uh, as they're reflected upon the water. June 11th is Locust Street Festival, uh, and also Milwaukee Black and Milwaukee County Office of Equity Black-Owned Summer Marketplace, two different locations. This one on June 11th is from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. and will be taking place at the Deer District. Uh, feel free to join us there for that too. Again, all links are below. June 17th is Taco Fest. Also on June 17th is Storytime in Butterfly Park from 12 to 3 and Summer Solstice. Also on June 13th through July 6th, join Fathers Making Progress for their liberation sessions, Black Liberation Movements in American History. This course will introduce students to the histories behind this contemporary movement. Class sessions will introduce topics such as emancipation, abolition, reconstruction, Jim Crow laws, the long civil rights movement, and present day struggles against police brutality. Also on June 16th, Fathers Making Progress is hosting their first annual gala. Please see the link below in order to register. 
And friends, don't forget June 1st through June 8th is Downtown Dining Week. Please come on down to Turner Hall and take uh, advantage of lunchtime fairs offered by Turning Tables Tavern. You can find uh, these pamphlets all over the city. They're great. Turning Tables Tavern will be open for lunch every day from Thursday to Thursday uh, during that week. And of course, their regular hours for dinner. Come on in, enjoy a beer before a show upstairs, or just have a good time. Well, friends, there are a lot of great things happening in Milwaukee these next few weeks. All links to the news and events that Gabby and I talked about are in the link tree in the comments section below. One link will connect you to all of the things we've discussed. And if you'd like to share events or find out how to sponsor Turner Updates, drop us a line here at info at milwaukeeturners.org. Thanks so very much for joining us for the second Turner Updates broadcast. Gabby and I would also like to give a special thank you to fellow Turners Juan Arevalo and Chrissy Fung, who helped us prepare all of this, and of course to Cheston Van Hus for production. Until next time, please take care of one another.